So what exactly is our project? In short, we've made the bacteria in E. coli sing. To make them sing, we inserted DNA that was responsible for flagella rotation, such as chemotaxis genes, into the E. coli. We then added promoters, or gene on switches, that turn on in response to different conditions, such as pH, temperature, and salt concentration. E. coli have flagella, a tail-like structure that rotates to propel the E. coli forward. We measured the rate of frequency and created a program to translate the frequency into an audible sound. So how exactly do scientists genetically engineer organisms? Well, I could lecture to you about it, or I could show you a short music video that we prepared about us in action making E. coli sing. Let's take a look! Can you blow my whistle, baby? Whistle, baby, let me know. Girl, I'm gonna show you how to do it, and we start real slow. You just put your lips together, and you come real close. Can you blow my whistle, baby? Whistle, baby. Here we go. And I'm betting you like girls to give love to girls and stroke your little ego. I bet you I'm guilty, your honor. That's just how we live in my genre. Who in the hell done paid the road wider? There's only one blow and one rider. I'm a damn shame, order more champagne. Pull a damn hamstring, trying to put it on ya. Let your lips spin back around, come. Slow it down, baby, take a look. Under rocks and breaking locks Just trying to find you I've been like a maniac, insomniac Five steps behind you Tell them other girls They can hit the exit check, please Cause I finally found a girl of my dream It's much more than a Grammy Award That's how much you mean to me You could be my it girl Baby, you're the shit girl Loving you could be a crime Crazy how we big girl This is it girl, give me 25 We created a program that will take the distance traveled by each bacteria, the time it took them to travel that distance, and we'll calculate the individual frequencies of the flagellum, the average frequencies of this, the note that this average corresponds to, and the standard deviation of these frequencies. It will also plot the various frequency responses to show a visual representation can then be played audibly.
and this is how the flagella are communicating with us. So what's the point of seeing bacteria? The point of seeing bacteria is to facilitate communication between the test subject, which is a bacteria, and the researcher. So in our case, we use E. coli to tell us what, how they're feeling in a certain condition. If it's salty, if it's too hot, if it's too cold, by testing the bacteria and finding out the frequency of their rotation, we can know how they're reacting to this condition. And it's pretty darn cool that E. coli can sing anyways. So this new and very promising field is called synthetic biology. But before I tell you what synthetic biology is, let's see what the average person thinks about synthetic biology in our team's E. coli manipulating ventures. You know, so you're creating life in a way, I'm guessing, so. Like artificial limbs, or like, I don't know, maybe, I don't know if this exists, but like maybe regenerative tissue. I, I really don't know, I'm guessing here. <laughs> like stem cell research, I think. You know. Like, maybe manufacturing genes, altering them in, in certain ways, etc. Growing body parts or things like that. We use science to genetically modify organisms, like, you know, making our watermelon riper tastier. Enhancing, like, a person's abilities, like, physically or, like, intellectually by altering like their DNA sequence. I don't know like <laughs> I've never really thought about it. <laughs> but uh I don't know maybe they're just like telling each other like where to move or something. I I, I really have no idea though. <laughs> I don't know, I, I imagine they might just say, reproduce, replicate. I don't know, maybe uh, they like, bump into each other. <laughs> say hi! <laughs> For us, let's reproduce and overgrow and make everything sick. <laughs> Divide and conquer, or group together and conquer. E. coli sing. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd say it depends on what the song is. I would ask if they sing on pitch. I think that would be really, really awesome. Uh, because they're crazy? <laughs> so synthetic biology is not only an exciting new field in science, I think it's actually the future. Um, it really gives the researcher the opportunity to use a blank canvas and take what nature has already done and redesign it to hopefully make it better. Uh, it gives the researcher the opportunity to really harness all of the tools that we've made in molecular biology uh, over the last uh, few decades uh, and combine them together to make something that's actually really new and that's never been done before. So it's an exciting new opportunity for young as well as experienced researchers to really contribute something novel uh, to the field of science. So synthetic biology actually has a lot of new applications that can be used. One, to clean up the environment, as well as to make new uh, applications in biology itself, whether that's making new restriction enzymes, uh, having new technologies to do the research that we do on a daily basis, uh, but ultimately it's made to make uh, work uh, easier and to have the actual organism do the work for you. I got involved in synthetic biology because I like the notion of combining two forms. On one aspect you have the biology element, where it's the hard sciences, it's dwelling into the human body and what it's capable of. But on the other side, you have an artistic, like what can you do with these elements that are already there? I just think it's really amazing how all of those little parts all come together. Uh, a year ago, I wrote an essay on synthetic biology and the works of Kiesling with antimalarial medicine and Foucher with the H5N1 virus really fascinated me. I got into iGEM because I, for a long time I've been really interested in pharmaceutical engineering and the development of synthetic biology because I feel like there's a lot of potential there. But I also got into it because iGEM presents the perfect opportunity to really work as, as an undergraduate and really work on my own project with my own team and not just not just work under someone else. So I got really interested in biology because it explains a lot of how nature works and I've always had a curiosity about our 
<clears throat> what processes are involved in and how we, you know, survive in this planet. Biology is basically the why about life. It can tell you why you breathe, why plants grow, and that's pretty cool because the more you know about biology, the more you know about the way things work. So why biology? Well, biology is a study of how life works. At first I wondered, so how does my cat meow, or how do I grow taller? The question became not how does it work, how can it work? And that's where synthetic biology comes in. How can we make bacteria who have been our mortal enemies since the beginning of time, how can we make them our best friends? It can help maybe save lives down the road, somehow we can create you know, vaccines or, or cures for things. All right, bacteria have like certain properties that might be useful, um, like in medicine. Gosh, I don't know. Yeah, I guess if you're speaking from a religious standpoint, that you may be altering um, God's work. Um, I mean, if it's if it's not done correctly, it could like cause some serious like disfigurations or you know, illnesses or something for people. I don't know, you might create something really diabolical. <laughs> what are the potential hazards of singing bacteria? Well, they could sing a terrible song, or maybe make a noise so high it makes people miserable. There's also the possibility of un unintentional consequences that could arise from when you know, scientists is doing research based on finding a cure for cancer or helping a disease or some sort of good, generally good research, but maybe accidentally develop something dangerous or something that could harm the public. Unfortunately, it's a field ruled by hypotheticals in Hollywood. For instance, what if Gattaca happens or Planet of the Apes or Splice or something like that? What if some scientist finds the cure for cancer, but another one accuses him or her of creating a biological weapon? Regulating synthetic biology is a definitive problem. We do have organizations such as Recombinant DNA Advisory Committee, the RIC, which lays down strict guidelines for the use of our DNA, but even this isn't perfect. Additionally, it's important that we also consider the alternative. Too much federal, state, or university regulation and progress in the field may be halted altogether. It's important that we find the balance of progressive research and federal regulation. It's difficult but important ethical issue to tackle because it's so unknown and yet somehow happening right now. This is a task our generation and generations after me are going to have to face. As members of USC's iGEM team, since we are actively participating in this very new field with a lot of ethical consequences, we do think about this a lot and we do talk about these consequences. So, um, talking about regulation, what, sh what should we do if there's unintentional consequences in terms of uh, iGEM members just um, working with bacteria and then we accidentally make a superbug? Well, first of all, we're not going to make a superbug because the genes that we're working with aren't even related. They're actually flagellar genes and chemotaxis genes. So, public perception thinks that if you modify any genes at all, somehow the entire bacteria will become virulent, but that's not the case. So, we wouldn't be able to do this, even if we tried. But what about the other scientists in the field of synthetic biology, such as Dr. Fischer? He created a H5N1 virus, but made it extremely powerful in terms of, I mean, extremely contagious, so that it can uh, technically wipe out half of the world. He actually wants to release his recipe so that other scientists can be able to um, create this type of virus. But he wants that for a vaccine, right? So, although his purposes were pure, maybe the actual result might be bioterrorism or something along those lines. Is that the concern? Well, isn't it kind of shocking that a scientist out there could create such a virus without anyone knowing? Yes, which is a problem in synthetic biology. We do need better regulation for it. But the thing is, synthetic biology offers so many benefits and everything has its risks. Just because mm, surgery has its risks, but also if you don't go through surgery, you might die for certain. So that's why Sometimes we have to give up a little bit of our security in order to gain a lot more back. But even in the case of uh, half of the world even being eliminated? Well, that just depends. Because the reason why he put out that information was for a good intention. He wanted other researchers to find a vaccine. So ultimately it is a trust in science that we can also find a vaccine for. It. So what I'm saying is that the benefits of synthetic biology outweigh the costs and the risks. For example, we use synthetic biology to make bacteria actually produce medicines and drugs for us. So one example is 
Artemisia, the plant Artemisia, produces the compound artemisinin, which is actually a potent antimalarial. We've been able to use bacteria to actually synthesize more artemisinin than is possible just by growing it in the field. So you provide good examples on why synthetic biology is beneficial to the human race. However, what do you say that what we're doing is essentially playing God? Should we even be modifying organisms at all? Well, it depends. So when we think of modified organisms, most people don't like it because it's like we're harnessing life for our own purposes. But at the same time, are we doing that already? I mean, you ate steak for lunch today. So we harness cattle and chickens for our own purposes. The only step is we're modifying it. And we should be modifying it because life is like the most perfect machine, one that has been developing for thousands and thousands of years. Why would we waste such an opportunity to use technology that's already here? Right. But what, what happens if we keep doing this to all of our species? Because that's what it seems like we keep doing. We keep genetically modifying our plants in order to make it perfect, in order to fulfill our needs, our selfish needs. Well, honestly, I don't know. I mean, I'd like to think that humans are rational enough or not selfish enough to ultimately destroy everything. That I know what is the end goal. They know how to preserve themselves and preserve the environment. But ultimately, see, synthetic biology is just another tool for humans. I'm not trying to change human nature. It's just everything can be abused. But just because it has the possibility of being abused doesn't mean we should fear everything about it. So I guess this is just where regulation comes in. Maybe we need to modify it much better in terms of maybe we can go into the plant industry, I mean crop industry, so then we can prevent such a scenario from ever occurring. Yeah, I mean, this is a gray area, which is why we're talking about it. If there was a black and white right, right, uh, right or wrong answer, I would hand you a mathematical proof, you'd say, mm-hmm, and then you'd hand me another mathematical proof, and then I'd say, mm-hmm, and then that'd be the end of this.